What's up guys? My name is Sarah Dietschy Rhymes with Peachy. Welcome to another episode of the Creative Exchange. I am here with my friends Eamon and Beck. Yay. Yes, you guys drove all the way here. Yes, so from far, Canada, Sarah. From Toronto. T dot. Did I say that right? Toronto? Tor- not not Toronto. Definitely yes. not Toronto. I used to say Toronto. Mm. And then all of my Canada friends. Yes. Friends. <laughs> We're just like, you're saying it wrong, Sarah. Tarana. The the more slurred you can make it, like Tarana, the Tarana. more in But not your... actually Toronto. That's a little over the top. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Toronto. Tarana. Tarana. Honestly, I've been having a lot of Canadians on the podcast lately. We so, noticed. So represent. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we were listening, obviously, to the podcast. And we were like, okay, why aren't we friends with Chris Howe? He's mm-hmm. like... Minutes. By the us. way, looked him up on Facey. We have like eight mutual friends. <laughs> You're kidding. No. But okay. we just weren't aware. So thank you for making yes. us aware. We're or, totally did you guys aware. connect or should I do that email we link? We do the email we, we thing, should, but... We right. should be linked up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we just we just caught up on that episode yesterday driving here. So <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Not, yeah. I'm not about so, to send him a DM right away. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So y'all's road trip here was unique mm-hmm. because you guys are all about that van life. Yeah, girl. So, For the people who are not aware, uh, you know, living out of a car, living out of a van, uh, tell me a little bit about what you guys do, you know, where, how you came to the van life. It's so funny because when we get like recognized at a coffee shop or something in a line, people come up and be like, hey, do you guys live in a van? (laughs) And everyone will kind of turn around and be like, uh, and then they'll say like, oh, it's my dream. I've been wanting to do it forever. So the people either get it or they don't get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so it's definitely not living in a van down by the river type of people. Mm-hmm. We, we kind of think of ourselves for lack of a better term as like new age hippies because we combine like this very earthy vibe and like chill with like absolute hustle and mm-hmm. entrepreneurship. Sort of minimalism in there as well. Yeah. So we actually create content about alternative living, specifically van life. So we converted a van. It's 60 square feet. Um, it's just a little home on wheels. And yeah, we make content about that. But we also have a tea company. So we make um, content about small business life and what it means to be mm-hmm. an entrepreneur on all sorts of creative levels, but also business levels and stuff like that. So sick. Yeah. When did when did you guys start the van life? The when van life when did long you long. leave the parents' home or the apartment? What was the jump like? Yeah, you want to take question. this one? Um, <laughs> great question, Sarah. So the van life chose us. We never chose the van life. Oh, okay. But okay. Um, no, we, we had a little taste in New Zealand. So we actually uh, rented a camper van for about a month and lived out of a van. And previous to that, we were total addicted hippie backpackers mm-hmm. traveling all through Southeast Asia and li- living in Australia. So um, we were kind of getting the point where it's like, oh, like, you know, I got, I got to unpack my bag every day, like just a mm-hmm. little bit. But obviously the adventure outweighed the um, cons. Yeah, the cons. So we had that taste and then we were itching to do something different. So we returned to Toronto and in Australia, the, we managed a cafe and the owner had developed mm-hmm. this really unique chai. Um, and we were super close with, with him. He was a, he was a big mentor even still to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, and he gave us his recipe and we traveled through India and Nepal learning more about chai. And so when we returned to Toronto, um, I started working at a coffee shop serving amazing coffee, but their chai was like a Starbucks syrup. So we literally started grinding spices in my mom's kitchen because we were both living at home trying to save more money to yeah. continue to travel. And put some spice and tea and honey and ginger in a Ziploc bag and went to a cafe and was like, yo, check this out. What do you think? And meanwhile, so one... I'm crying because I'm like, no, I'm a hippie. I don't want a business. Like I want, <laughs> like I was working at this hospitality job where I had to wear lipstick and heels just to make really good money really yeah. fast, which is obviously not my vibe. If you guys know me. And I, I, he was like, yeah, I'm just going to sell this on the side. He's got such an entrepreneurial mm-hmm. spirit about him. And I'm like, no, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> Babe, little, don't become little, a businessman. Yeah, please don't make our lives better. Yeah, I know. A little additional revenue on the side. We'll be out of here in three months. It's, it's no yeah. problem. So anyway, it wasn't three months. It turned into three years. Wow. But um, we now run a successful tea company based out of Toronto. Wow. So the question was about van life, though. <laughs> no, but congrats. <laughs> the story is long. That's, I know. No, that's good, but, though. But yeah. I think you it was that, important to... You need that to, context. Yes, yeah, exactly. exactly. You know? Exactly. So from there, we... So we had our office space and we were living at Eamon's mom's because we were new business owners and just kind of reinvesting every penny we made into the company. And we were like, okay, it's time. Let's get our own 
office space. I mean, office space, my goodness. Let's get our own apartment in Toronto. And we're looking all over. The cheapest we could find was a basement, one bedroom uh, for $2,200 a month. Mm. And we were like... Sounds like New York. Yes, yeah. exactly. So it's intimidating and all of these things. Meanwhile, Eamon being the dreamer of the two of us had already been looking at vans and hmm. test driving vans without me knowing. So he gets this notification the same day we're signing this lease and it just felt like this moment, this crossroads, like let's continue living the adventure and do something really cool or we can settle down and get an apartment and pay $2,200 a month. Yeah. And so we, I mean, we knew it was kind of a movement. Like if you go to hashtag van life on Instagram, yeah. it's massive. Yeah. So uh, the van was kind of just always in the back of the idea. But then when we started thinking realistically, okay, you know, are we going to spend $2,200 a month when we could be funneling more of that into our business? And okay, how are we going to expand our business? How are we going to drive out West? Too. How mm-hmm. are we going to meet all these cafe partners? Mm-hmm. Um, and also like, how are we going to fill that travel itch that we have? Mm-hmm. So it was just, it was the right move. It was the perfect scenario for us. Like you said, like we had a really great base in Toronto. We had all these great cafe partners. And then we were like, okay, an Airbnb in Vancouver, plus the flight there, plus all of these things that is going to add up to be so much. Mm-hmm. Whereas if we had our little van and we could stealth camp and we could drive there, meet these guys in person, that's how, mm-hmm. you know, we find success in sales. But so it just kind of fell into place. And of course, when we told our families, they were you know <laughs> a I little mean, taken aback i'm sure but, but before though you guys were camping and traveling you know in asia and stuff so did they think that that was a phase maybe or was that less risky in their eyes than you know living in a van yeah because um, i guess with a van you have to deal with maybe breakdowns there's maintenance you know that kind of becomes your home yeah so what was the first maybe scary moment or just kind of like moment in the van that you you were tested and like did did your family were they like okay time to come back home guys yeah I think that (laughs) first just to touch on both of our families like we come from sort of traditional well I do definitely your dad was an entrepreneur so they understand risk a little bit more Mm -hmm. but they're both so so awesome in Super just supporting supportive. us yeah. no matter what and I think they they've known we've been together for six years now of those six years we're all over the place so everyone's kind of like oh it doesn't surprise me that you're gonna do mm-hmm. something crazy again but in a lot of ways they were also super excited that it was a van in North America so we couldn't <laughs> yeah. leave okay. the continent. good point yes good that point. is true yes. so when we true. cracked it like my, my dad was kind of like oh cool and my mom was like yeah great call <laughs> But I think Beck's parents were a little bit more like, what do you mean? Especially I kind of introed it in the, the sense where- The way we announced it was a bit We dramatic. walked in and I said, guys, we bought a house <laughs> and it's on wheels. And they, they probably at the house part were like, so proud of you. No, but then, well, like, they were like, how the hell did you afford that? <laughs> the team business is great. Yeah. <laughs> well, my sister and her partner had just bought a house. My brother had just bought a house with his partner. So it was like- my family was growing up. And so, yeah. I, yeah, it was kind of like, oh, we're so excited for you. That's awesome yeah. that you too have bought a house. And then, yeah, it's 60 square feet and it's on wheels and it's just a van and there's nothing in it. And yeah. So we got, we got Jerry on Pinterest and My started mom. showing her a little bit, you know. What... Did you show her YouTube videos? Oh, yeah. Uh, the, How to... the documentary. Totally. Yeah. Because it, it really has become a thing. And when I, when I started searching it more, I'm like, there are so many, I mean, you guys have your own community. There's so many channels that are just dedicated to that. So do you guys have some people in, you know, who also have converted fans? Do you hang out? Do you like meet up in places? Of course. The funniest funniest thing is like, as soon as you say, or you find out someone else lives in a van, it's just like right away your best friends. Because you both have that common interest. You're both valuing, you know, opportunities over, um, things things or or, you know less is more kind of Mm -hmm. thing so Mm -hmm. yeah the van life community is strong we do van life meetups with other van peeps yeah it's pretty cool yeah no yeah for sure and i think that's what's really cool it's kind of like saying you're a youtuber to someone because then Mm -hmm. you have this commonality as well Mm -hmm. um so especially when we find people who like create content and live in vans we're just like and if they're vegan holy (laughs) yeah (laughs) trifecta you know we're We're like okay let's do this for life (laughs) so you said you were vegetarian for a while and then recently went vegan and then what about yeah yeah around the same time like we've been like plant-based for over a year now maybe even longer two almost yeah Yeah. so before that though it was a real journey with this guy because i'd be like i really want to be 
I, I really believe I was born vegetarian. Like I mm. never wanted to eat turkey at Christmas because it looked like the turkey, mm-hmm. you know? And I like always had these issues with eating animals. So then I yeah. I would say to him, please, can we not buy it? And then I'd see him at the grocery store sneak like a pack of turkey in and I'd just start crying like, please don't do this, you know? <laughs> I need my protein, girl. So, yeah, you're like, no, 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 I'm not doing this. So it was this real journey for us of like literally since we've been together of just like exploring food and yeah. what that means for us. And I and totally it was get a that. It's unique a introduction into veganism. I have three siblings and uh, they're all triplets. And Crazy. yeah. And so they went veg like years ago when they were mm-hmm. young. And my, my dad was like, what is this? Some kind of fad? Like what's going on? <laughs> yeah. And then one of them went vegan and then another one vegan mm. and then all three of them were vegan. So it's like, whoa. So I kind of learned how to use substitutes and how to cook vegan mm-hmm. and like how amazing vegan food can taste. And yeah. so that was a little bit of an easier intro for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, once they start shoving a few docos down <laughs> your throat, you're, you're pretty into it. Yeah. So sure. with you, Beck, it started yeah. with, uh, you know, animals like, oh my God, I can't eat animal. And then yeah. did it kind of progress to the bigger picture or what, what was the first thing that stuck out to both of you guys when, cause there's so many aspects of it. You can, sure. like, mm-hmm. the environmental side of mm-hmm. it, animals, economically, yeah. there's so many things involved with yeah. like meat production and all of that stuff. So yeah. kind of like, where did it start? And then was it just a learning journey? from there yeah I think for me like we said it was definitely the animals at least with vegetarianism Mm -hmm. is that how you yeah vegetarianism yeah um so yeah it was all about like just not wanting to eat the actual animal and then maybe it was more health when I learned about veganism like I never really digested dairy very well and all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff and it was just really a journey yeah yeah how about you yeah I think everything combined I mean it's just once you do kind of unfold what those industries stand for and what they're doing every single day mm-hmm. it's just you know the only thing you can really do in your power is either say i, I support it or i don't mm-hmm. and so you know every time you're in that grocery store and you pick up an item just thinking twice on like how it got there and being a little bit more conscious on um you know the path on how your, your food ends up on your table um, i actually i have to take that back the the way we went vegan was we were both at shows for our business so i was somewhere and mm-hmm. was somewhere else and he's just such an extreme personality. So he had met these two glowing, this uh, a man and a woman. They were a 45 couple. years old, glowing. Yeah. yeah. You and know he, when you see someone and you're just like, like what, what are, are you, you putting doing? in your smoothie? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what are you putting? <laughs> you're beautiful. So yeah. he, I guess, said you're beautiful or you're glowing or what's up. And they were like, you know, we just went vegan and here's why. And it was, what's that Gary dude's name? Gary Yurofsky. Oh, uh, does he have the like hour long college? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I sat through that so, entire video. <laughs> he is so extreme, and yeah. it's not the way that I would ever it's want to approach. It's definitely not for everyone. But yeah. Eamon is like, oh, watch the whole thing, mm-hmm. watch the next 10 of his videos. And yeah. I got home from this show I was working at so tired, and he's like, okay, we're vegan now, by yeah. the way. Hmm. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So it maybe like after that, I trans- transitioned a bit slower and was just mm-hmm. kind of like, I need to figure this out on my own. But you were like, overnight black mm-hmm. and white this is definitely yelling from the rooftop so i've yeah. chilled out a lot because yes. i think veganism is one of those things where you know like we were talking about before the podcast if, if you're mm-hmm. you know what am i trying to say if you're if you're trying to push it on someone yeah. um and well, they it's don't often know, like or religion the, too it's exactly you right know? so like, you need to yeah. chill out and i think that what Living we do is just lead, lead by example yeah. mm-hmm. and let everyone come to their realization on their mm-hmm. own. And show people Champ's Diner. And then- yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's how uh, my eyes were kind of open. I'm not vegan, but, you know, John is vegan. He's been vegan for a while. And so it started with he's like the most non judgmental, like sweet human ever. Yeah. And so it got to the point where you know, he was just like living his life. And then it led me to just ask him questions like, well, well, why that? And like, Mm -hmm. oh, what's the documentary you're watching? And like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I'll watch that with you or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And then just also hearing it, it might seem really insensitive, unsensitive. Mm -hmm. um, But it actually took me to think about it like the like environmental economic way yeah. of like producing red meat and stuff to kind of like reconcile with it. Cause like growing up in Texas and like sure. we live off cheeseburgers and for stuff, sure. your brain is just wired. Like animals are put here on this earth for us to eat, for mm-hmm. you sure. know? Yeah. And you know, I grew up with uh, all of my family, like deer hunting and although that's a different thing. I think if 
I don't know, like they eat the deer meat, and that's probably like the purest form of like, I'm like meat consumption that you could do. If yeah, you're gonna pull the trigger. Then exactly. That's your, your yeah. call kind exactly. Of um, but then you figure out there's so much more in between that, mm-hmm. you know. So that was kind of because usually you would think, I guess, when you're on that side, you would think like, ah, oh, it's animals. Like, no, I don't. You think have, that. you know, yeah, yeah. But it's, different it's for everyone. yeah, I guess it is different for everyone. So that's how I was kind of like, oh, okay. Maybe me just like not eating a cheeseburger once a week can actually like mean something, mm. you know? <laughs> and that's Sarah's true. a hippie now. No. Yeah, guys. <laughs> Sarah and John moving into a van. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Both going vegan, moving to Canada. And so yeah. I think that's a great point about John just kind of letting you come to it on, mm-hmm. on your own because that's kind of what I had to learn and to, yeah. and to step back. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're trying to do with our, our new content is we're getting more into kind of food related videos so every mm-hmm. Friday we're posting like recipe videos and just showing that people can make like an amazing eggs benedict with no hmm. eggs and no butter yeah and it's like oh my gosh Whoa. tell me the secret yeah watch the video okay girl. freestyle guys. fridays girl okay hey guys Friday. make sure to check out the youtube channel for this eggs benedict um yeah food food okay so i'm gonna go to the diner place yes mm-hmm. that Cheers will diner. that will be the first place that i go to when john gets back um but so please, you guys please send me a photo of the food when you do we, i'm gonna be so envious we, oh i'm happy that i live in the place that this is yeah you're really lucky or you're in trouble because i'm sure it's, it's like comfort not health, food, it's comfort right food. Yeah. yeah yeah vegan <laughs> comfort food you got it um did, so you guys both grew up in canada right yes how did you guys meet yeah that's a great question, babe. Do you want to tell her the truth or do you want to... Uh... Yeah, I'll, t- I'll tell her the truth. Okay. Truth. Two, s- two stories, you know? Yeah. Um, we met working after we both graduated from school. So funny enough, I went to, I guess in the States, you would call it college versus community college. Mm-hmm. But I went to like university and you went to college in the same university town. Small town. Like relatively small. Like mm-hmm. went to the same bar every Wednesday night. Like yeah. we were definitely crossing paths all the same, all the time, but we just weren't meant to meet then. Mm-hmm. So as soon as we graduated, we got jobs at this marketing company. Plus when you go to pick up a, a girl at a bar and you say that you go to college and she goes to university, it doesn't usually go as well. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah? No, so I might've tried to pick her up once, but then she found out I went to college. <laughs> No, never. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. But um, <laughs> but yeah. So we met at our first jobs after university and college. Mm-hmm. Eamon was technically my boss, which he's going to interject mm-hmm. if I don't say that. So <laughs> yes, he was my boss. We worked on this program together, and then I worked in office for a couple of months after. But I think the reason that we work so well as a couple is we met working together, mm-hmm. and we he was sort of out of bounds for me as my boss and I'm sure you as as your employee. So we were just like really good friends for a year. And then from there, we were both like, why are we 21 and grinding at this job for Mm -hmm. no money? And, and we, we worked really well together. Yeah. So like I, that added so to our So it was just like a marketing agency. You guys were totally. like running campaigns and stuff. Yeah. For, so we okay. would we would be like the teams that would go out for Labatt or something. Fortune and 500 hand out. companies and do like experiential marketing campaigns. Gotcha. So gotcha. the one that we actually met on was for like a ibuprofen. Like Motrin. Oh. I don't even know if you have it in the States. No, no, no Yeah. I've, you know what Motrin when is? When I played basketball and that was my life yeah I like lived off of Motrin oh, because my yeah. body would just be which isn't good you know I guess you should let your body like work <laughs> out what it needs to work out but when it was constant like yeah. three hours four hours of basketball every single day I'd be like hit me yeah with Motrin, Motrin. come on mom so we could have supplied you with some yes legit samples my, my so med sorry person. I didn't know you then <laughs> but we met working on that campaign and we'd go out to volleyball tournaments and stuff and hand out the product and then we both were in office where we were just managing those teams cool but that's where we met so on that job so we would go out and work events for hours and we just really got along really well yeah but I looked at him like I probably loved you but I was like oh he's just my friend because he's my boss and whatever right so then (laughs) I said to my buddy I said okay I'm done with this I hate I hate your version of this corporate life and we decided that we were going to go to Thailand. And Beck was actually waiting to hear back from a cruise ship because she her dream was to be a dancer on a cruise ship. Wow. So um, they... What the hell you doing? <laughs> uh, so basically I was like, hey, Beck, I'm thinking about going to Thailand. And she was like, well, you know what? I could probably wait to hear back from the cruise this ship. cruise ship anywhere, anywhere in the world. Yeah. So she ended up 
coming with us and the three of us had ventured into Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. Huh. And a few nights later, you know, we started hooking up and this and that. Mm-hmm. And one thing led to five the years other. later, yes. we're yeah. engaged and yeah, business congrats. partners and Thanks. live in 60 square feet together and don't yeah. kill each other. Living the dream. I love it. Living I the love dream. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Congrats on the engagement and Thank everything. You. So what is, what's going to be the big, like, okay, you're married. Now what? Wow. We've been engaged for over a year. So for like a year and a half. We're like the worst wedding planners of all time. If well, anybody hey, wants to plan our wedding, please let I me mean, know. I mean, you guys have options though. You could do it anywhere in the world, right? Just fly your parents out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. We were always like, we'll totally do a destination wedding. Like, right. so our vibe. And then my grandmother, who I love more than anyone in the world, is yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. So we're just I'm not so into anybody. doing so much right now. We're so excited about life yeah. and the position we're in. Yeah. And the way things are going, and we're loving YouTube space and everything. So mm-hmm. there's so many other projects. Like do you guys, so low on our list. So <laughs> when you say that, do you actually go to the physical YouTube space? In oh no 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 okay. no no! no. I okay. just mean like the, the space. space of like YouTube. we're only <laughs> okay. eight months of like this YouTube it's meeting so other yeah. creators. It's so exciting. Okay. Kind of, yeah. And, okay. Yeah. See, and I didn't know it was that new for you guys so it's it's always really encouraging to hear of like new people who are coming on the platform and really crushing it and oh my gosh it's possible to get subscribers in 2018 and 2017 and I think that's something you know that I've talked with Chris Howe about um because with creativity and maybe like camera tutorials and just like sharing all that side of it you you always think that it's super saturated yeah and that might like just cause fear or something in you to like not go and get it. So sure. um, I'm sure with y'all stuff though, I mean, did it feel like a new fun frontier? Because I think the alternative living is fairly, I mean, I would say in the past five years, it's really popped off, but it's new. Like on right? YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In, in like terms of the social. It, it's really yeah. popped off. Like mm. in the social space. It's yeah. like, it's like the saying, you know, if you don't see the tree fall in the forest, does it really fall? It's like, right. if it's not documented on the internet, has it really existed? Right, exactly. Our aunts <laughs> lived in vans and traveled. And, you know. Yeah, exactly. Okay, like, really? For sure. When we told Amon's side of the family, one of his aunts was over one time and we're like, so we're going to move into a van. And she's like, honey, I lived in three vans in my time and two VW buses and whatever. She looked at us like, yeah, what? so what? So, I mean, like you're saying, it, it's been happening forever, yeah. but I think the movement of van life specifically has been documented and talked about a lot more in the last couple of years. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. And then I think what we're doing that's maybe different or helped us grow in the community is showing the authentic behind the scenes. So mm-hmm. you, you don't realize that people are interested in your everyday, like where do you park at night and all of yeah. these things. So there was lots of great tutorials on YouTube and that's mm-hmm. how we learned how to build our van. Um, and so we started there and we were like, well, we want to give back to all of those people who helped us with the build. Let's do a build series. But then we were like, well, we're not done. Actually, we did take a break. We were just kind of like did the build series and started traveling. And then we were like, well, what if people are interested in the day-to-day life of how we live in a van full time? Mm -hmm. Um, And that's sort of where we really started creating consistent content. Yeah. So cool. And you guys have an office in Toronto. So that allows you to like have somewhat of a base where you can work on things. You can do the builds. Um, How did you guys have that? Um, like, did you just get it recently or have you always had it? Has We've that, like, helped the process? Weeks. Yeah, for No, sure. we got it before we started okay. the van life thing. That's good, so, yeah. And, I mean, it's kind of turned into, like, half chai, half van conversion now. Yeah, it's kind similar of to this space, you know? John's yeah. area, yeah. yellow wall. <laughs> it's, like, Eamon's area with tools and then I'm the one behind, like, running the company with paper right. working. You know? We don't even He's know where like- to expense these things. So, like, <laughs> buying a new tool is, like, uh, your tea company is buying a chop saw? <laughs> yep. Yes, oh yes, yes, gosh. to build the... So thing. do you guys have employees at the chai company or is it just you two? It's us and Eamon's dad helps us pretty full time. So he's awesome. like a salaried employee. Um, we and then part-time just people part-time people, people here cool. and When we there. make the tea and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. You guys Which are is doing it. Thanks. Like employees. I know. I know. Well, that's why like you start with a retired dad. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's a yeah. very... And, and for me too, I feel like I love people so much, but I also am like really introverted in my space and in my office mm-hmm. and 
all of those things. So to bring someone onto the team, especially when you're such a small team, I'm sure you yeah. go through all of it too. It's scary, and, mm. but it's probably necessary to grow. And well, it's funny because we we're, we we're at that point with our business where we've got a lot of opportunities and, you know, looking at business, I, I look at my dad, who's been a big mentor for us. He said, the bigger the company got, it didn't necessarily make more money. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of at that mm -hmm. point where it's like, okay, you're going to move into a bigger office. You're going to have more overhead, more employees. Is it worth it? Or should we just kind of keep it small, keep it craft? So it's... Keep it sustainable it's for our we're lives. Learning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're that's, just figuring it out on yeah, the fly. Yeah. We don't know what we're No, doing. that's... I mean, I think that's such a great thing to think about. Um, and also in this day and age when I think there's so much like money flying everywhere with like venture capital. Yeah. Um, and I think the startup life and that world can be so intense. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to be such a special person to be that and do that and raise money. And so I think having self-awareness is the most important thing that you can have. It's For like sure. being a small business is not bad. Like yeah. living your life the way you want to live it. Totally. Like you do not have to be banking a million dollars every year to be like a successful business owner. Exactly. You banking a million dollars for a million headaches kind of thing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we always say I would so much rather be happy and have a flexible life to then go and create content or drive to New York yeah. and meet Sarah. And yeah. it's like that's what we value at least at this point in time. And I mm -hmm. don't want this massive multi-billion dollar company yeah. if I can create a really sustainable company that's doing great things um, but that also gives us the flexibility to be creative and create yeah. content and all of that kind of stuff. So. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. What's what's special about your chai and your tea? Ooh. Go a for lot. It. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we, we actually, it's very unique. We just make chai. So chai is an Indian okay. tea. It's a masala chai, which mm -hmm. means spicy tea. And so we grind up uh, eight different spices in small batches. So things like cardamom, cinnamon, black pepper, star anise, fennel. Um, and we add fresh ginger root that we actually peel into the mm. blend and mix Blind it all hand. with certified organic honey. So it's actually a wet, sticky blend. It's fresh. It's delicious. It's super healthy. It's actually one of the healthiest teas you could have. Mm. And so we, up until about a year ago, we just had the original blend chai and we just launched a rooibos chai, which is caffeine free. And that's what we do. And so we mainly work with independent coffee shops and cafes. So they would serve our chai, chai wala, on the menu. Mm -hmm. um, and now that we're growing a little bit of a following, our online store is really starting to take over. Good. We're starting to see a lot of success on selling right to consumers. Yeah, yeah I think there's that something... direct to consumer line. Uh, yeah. I think there's something really special about preparing it at home as well. Mm -hmm. um, the whole idea behind why we love chai, at least in India, is there's a ritual behind it. And in a day when you live in New York City or you live in Toronto and you're like hustle and bustle and running around to take two minutes out of your day and like actually steep a tea and prepare mm -hmm. it properly is actually really therapeutic mm -hmm. and the, it's medicinal for you in a lot of ways. But I think the ritual is really healing as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our consumers love ta making it at home. Um, so there's a real shift in our company from that business to business to B2C and trying to get people to take it mm -hmm. home with them. So. Who is your inspiration? It could be a business person. It could be content creators. It could be your parents. Who, yeah. who inspires you the most? It could be multiple people, Is it too. so cheesy that I say that you... Like, Eamon really does inspire me in a lot of ways. Oh, God. Yeah, he's not the lamest thing ever. ever. No, I just, like, don't feel like I would be where I am today without his drive and, like, big picture thinking mm -hmm. and... I mean, I have lots of inspirations, but the first thing I thought of was you because you really do inspire me to just like go out and get it. And mm -hmm. um, I, I think I have talents and I, you know, could do great things in this world. But yeah, you've definitely inspired me to push the limits on, on what I can do. Yeah. And I have so much ADD that I have so many <laughs> inspirations. So it changes every day. Literally. So it? like Sarah, you're an inspiration because you're you. like, you know, meeting yeah. up with Gary Vee and like listening to what he's saying about podcasting and then mm -hmm. boom, next month she's got a successful podcast. 100%. So little things like that. I mean, obviously Casey is a huge inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, as far as business people go, like I look at my dad who, who ran a very successful company. Um, so, I mean, there's so much you inspiration out there. You love Gary Vaynerchuk too. You get on his content. Love Gary Like whenever yeah. you need a boost, you're 100%. like all over yeah. that. Yeah. I, I receive he's a little that bit, He's a little energy. hot, yeah. you know, at times. So I take him kind of hot. <laughs> yeah. You have to take <laughs> him in stride. doses. Yeah. Totally. When, when I need a kick in the butt, I'll watch his video and yeah. I'll have him scream at me for five minutes. I'll be like, okay, I'm ready now. Yeah. But that's the coolest part about social is like, if you're feeling demotivated, jump online, yeah. mm -hmm. find someone, watch mm -hmm. their stuff mm -hmm. and 
God say and do it. Yeah, mm. and yeah, I think that's great. I think your inspiration checklist is good. <laughs> Heck yeah, guys. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, because it's like, it's not about these big people doing massive things. For me, I find inspiration in like small creators who are just grinding at it or mm. our small business friends in the city of Toronto who yeah. you've watched go from nothing really and you know at the flea markets with us with their black tablecloth and then the next year they've mm -hmm. got a tent and like those small things small it's, cool. it's really inspiring cool. because there's so many people who get um caught up in perfection and they just like get paralyzed by not starting or being scared to start or all of the fear that or comes compare with them it. to these top dogs yeah mm -hmm. you can't compare your vlogs to casey casey's mm -hmm. the top of the top yeah. you know yeah. as soon as you start and, doing that, and your lifelong goal can't be to have a lamborghini like Ty no. lopez you know yeah. it's like you have to be practical with yourself and what like what do you like what are you good at because mm -hmm. totally. a lot of people i think flock to vlogging without a topic you know, mm -hmm. it, it would be so different if you guys weren't living in a van, you didn't have a company and you were like working at a marketing agency still. And it's like, okay, let's start a vlog. Okay, but what about, you know, I think it's so important to have that journey, have that story to tell. Story yeah. to tell. That yeah. is, you know, maybe it's not super unique, but it's unique in your way. Well, and I look at someone like Jesse Driftwood where mm -hmm. it's like the mm -hmm. dude started on Instagram basically just like filming his commute to work. Right? Yeah. So it's like, even if your life is so boring, if you have a story. <laughs> yeah, we're not saying your life is boring, If Jessie. you have a one wheel. Yeah, if you have a one wheel, if your kid is one of the cutest kids on the planet Earth, yes. then you're, you're basically killing it. Yeah. 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 But I think in this day and age, you can make something for yourself and the internet's a really amazing place. Um, so that's where I find a lot of inspiration in the people who are just mm -hmm. making it happen in whatever way they're making it happen. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we're obviously hippie spirits in a lot of ways, but it's like what I value and I want to achieve in life is very different from maybe what you want to do mm -hmm. or whatever. And just kind of like respecting everyone's thing and just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just sense. doing it. Just, just doing, doing it. it. Just I love it. it. What yeah. is it like not only working with your partner in crime, but also living in such tight quarters? Best things and then maybe like some annoyances. <laughs> Start with best things, I guess. Sure. So many nights have came in my head. No, I'm just kidding. Aww. No, we are super, super lucky. I think maybe unique, but we know what are the hot buttons and we know how to push them when we want to, but then also, you know, take a breath. So we get on so well. And like Beck said, we've been ever since day one, like before even dating or before friends, we were employees, right? So we work together. Colleagues and is the word. <laughs> Well, we employees, employees of a large company. <laughs> yeah. um, and so maybe that has something to do with what crafted our relationship. Because we were such good friends first, I think. it, And we just genuinely enjoyed each other's company so much, working together, mm -hmm. whatever it was. And then we, as far as business goes, like we know whose role it is to, to do different things. And I think that's so important. If, you, you know, if you're going to work with your, your spouse or your partner um, and you guys have shared talents, it's like you guys are going to be hitting heads mm -hmm. at who wants to do the creative stuff or who wants to do the admin stuff. So it's funny because in our chai business, there was never that overlap because I was very much the admin person emails like Eamon doesn't even know what's going on half the time. And he was like the sales outgoing person and we just respected each other in the yeah. roles. But then when it came to YouTube, it would be like I would edit the video one way and think it was great. And I'd go back and watch what he'd done. And I'm like, you changed everything I loved about this video, you know, yeah. so that was maybe the first time in our work lives because it was so creative that we maybe didn't always see eye to eye, eye, to eye on. And I think that's unique too, is, is talking to a couple that shares a YouTube channel mm. and figuring out like, how do you, you know, execute your creativity? Yeah. Because in a lot of ways, like I have a, an idea on how today's vlog is going to turn out. Totally. And she has it's a totally so different. different idea. Yeah. So do you guys switch off or does uh, one person take one week or? No. no we just <laughs> Do you, just, just, what is our system? I don't know. Does one person do like the first cut and one person gets final cut? I think we both have a vibe that we like. Yeah. We yeah. like them snappy. We like them to the point. Um, but it's so interesting because then we, we will release something that, you know, we're starting like a new series, Blurbs with Beck, and she just goes off. Like, <laughs> you know, 
whatever it is. Because he always cuts me out, and people and are like, people I want to hear that. And people love it. So yeah. it's like, maybe I should just shut up and not do the snappy vlogs. I don't know. Yeah, and it's such a, because it's only been eight months for us on YouTube, it's a, a total learning curve. We're like, mm -hmm. And we have to experiment, which gets scary, because mm -hmm. you're like, no, this one performed really well, so you do a couple like that. But then you're like, I want to try something different, and maybe it flops, but you have to be. But you have to do that in order to land to. on right. something that does work yes um, and that's sustainable yeah. and you can keep creating content about it so um going back yeah. to the original question yes, sorry. <laughs> I, I, do, I think the biggest thing is like at the end of the day we know we're we're gonna share our life together mm -hmm. and so regardless of yeah. the argument or you know we just move on really fast. You just move on. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. like you, you brush it off no so quickly. No time for grudges. Yeah. yeah we're we're going to be sleeping in the same little mm -hmm. van tonight. Literally <laughs> on the way here, I said to you, I'm like, listen, I know you're in some kind of mood with me today. Like, that's totally fine. And I get it. Like, maybe I'm annoying you or whatever. But could you just snap out of it? Because, you yeah. know, we got to go do this podcast. And yeah. I'd like to be in a good place. And he's like, okay. Like, you know. We Solved. Just, we move on. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Does that answer the question? 100%. 100%. Okay. So stories of sketchiness. Mm. I feel like when you're living in a van and you're maybe sleeping in parking lots or weird roads you're not aware of, I feel like you encounter some interesting things. So ha have you had some scares? The first thing I'll say about that is I th that's exactly how I viewed van life from the outside. And then once you live it and you close your curtains you could be in a walmart parking lot or on the streets of brooklyn last night it's the most comfortable adorable little home and i never feel sketched you know we we drove down to mexico recently and okay. it was like we would be in this little sketchy town in mexico that we've never heard of we just had to drive there because it was off the highway and like we didn't do our research it's like yeah, maybe that research. was dumb but yeah. you know once you like beck said once you close the door it's like you could be anywhere you're just mm -hmm. in your little house so mm -hmm. We've been super fortunate. There haven't, there hasn't been like a crazy story that I could tell you right now. Well, sure. We broke down pretty hardcore. Mm. You tell that story. Okay. I mean, that wasn't <laughs> sketch though. Still, like it's there true. was no sketchiness mm. about it. It wasn't sketchy, but I think you asked us earlier about, um, you know, you live in the van, so then there's a breakdown, and it's a lot more traumatic than just your car breaking mm. down it's your because home. it's your home. So when we were in Mexico, we had I was just driving along on the highway. I think you were editing a vlog. And I tapped you and I'm like, okay, the car just made a weird thing. I'm going to pull over. Didn't seem dramatic at all. It just kind of mm -hmm. tugged a little weird. Mm -hmm. And we pulled over. We ended up sleeping there because we couldn't get the car started. Went to the, got towed. And it turns out we needed an entirely new engine. Like the, the camshaft oh wouldn't spin. It was a total disaster. So we they were don't in even Central use Mexico. these engines in Mexico. So they couldn't get parts. If you wanted parts, you'd have to wait months at a time. They couldn't even bring you a new engine in. So we ended up actually towing the van to the border. <laughs> Texas border. Texas border. Eamon sat with like this Spanish speaking, did not know what was happening. Eamon's vlogging it. The guy's like, You know when we were talking camera? about your roles of the relationship? Like mm -hmm. this was when I stepped in and Beck was. This is your role. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then no one would bring the van through the border, not, not a Mexican or an American. So we had to find a buddy of a buddy of an uncle whose <laughs> friend had a tow truck company on the border town who had a Subaru because the commercial bridge was closed at three in the morning when we were waiting to bring chains and literally tow our little sprinter van across the border, then put it on a flatbed, drive it to Austin, get a new motor, go back into the city, go back into Mexico. It was crazy. And everyone thought we were oh, crazy. Oh, so you to went back. back to Mexico. Yeah. This was, so we had two months we had booked off from our like business life and we thought, okay, let's go to Mexico. You know, we have the travel bug. So it was just yeah. like, let's do this. And it was day two of our trip. We were in my so head. then if you're listening to this and you're thinking like, oh my gosh, these guys are so dumb. <laughs> Getting back into Mexico, our oh oil starts dripping. And we're like, get out. Guess what town we're in? We're the same town that we broke down in. The locals like, are probably 15, like, Mario, these the, white the dude, people again. Yeah. Seriously, they're like, gringo? Yeah. Gringo, gringo. The dude at the Mercedes dealership <sighs> just shook his when head. When we rolled back in, he's like, no. <laughs> or I towed back in or whatever. He's yeah. like, you guys aren't seriously here again. And I was like, never in our travels have I ever thought... Like, we've had some weird stuff happen to us. And I'm always like, oh, this happened for a reason. You know, like, this is okay. But that was kind of like, what the... It's like, why me? Yeah. No, not even <laughs> pity for myself. But just like, are we stupid for coming back? Into right. Yeah, like, how dumb are we? We're anyway, it wasn't, it wasn't a disaster. Mario is a complete legend. Good. Fixed it up. Shout and out you to know, Mario. Yeah. Mario, we love you. And actually, one of our, like, YouTube followers found us. He lived in the town. 
and we ended up becoming like a part of his crew in Karataro. Sergio, like, huge shout out to you, man. Yeah, You're a legend as well. yeah. So it was. It it always turns in if you just yeah. are positive about even the negative stuff of travel. It can be amazing. That's and, cool. Yeah, the, the locals in Mexico were amazing. So. But it just sounds sketchy. Like you broke down, you're in central Mexico. Yeah. You know, like what do you do? But So, I mean, going back to that kind of question of sketchiness, like our situation has been really, really cool. Now, I wouldn't like go and broadcast that publicly saying like, oh, it's totally safe living in a van. Like obviously you're exposing yourself to the elements. Like you're sleeping on the streets in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. We're, I think, very aware of people. So we're not going to have the door open with the lights on and like listening to music and hanging out. That's just asking for Mm -hmm. attention. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times like we'll be aware, we'll roll into a quiet street, close the curtain, pass out, get up early. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. don't put yourself out there. Yeah. And we don't like drink and go out and party and come back. Mm -hmm. We're just like responsible kids that go back to the van. No. Yeah. I feel like we, I was about to say we live similar lives. (laughs) Not really, but but in in respect of, work and like being creative yeah. and how like meeting up with friends and just creating or editing a video or just having coffee with someone is so much more fun than like going out and getting smashed totally. <laughs> you know totally um, you just have such a drive and a zest for like mm-hmm. all of the projects you're working on that the idea of waking up hungover is yeah it's, it's there's so no stupid, there's no it? time yeah i know there's no time. i think there's you're either no like time. that or you're not yeah right? yeah exactly and i think maybe, maybe if you talk to me like Eight years ago, I wouldn't have been like that. But I'm like, we're both so switched on. We're so psyched to Mm. wake up and get shit done. Create and do. Yeah. The hardest thing for us is that we're both night owls. So it's like, Mm. okay, I wish I was a morning person. So Mm. we'll lie in bed and we're like, oh my God, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. And we're like, you know, talking business all the time or talking about a new video all the time. Like it definitely never stops. But because it never feels like work, which is again, so People who are listening to this who are like, oh, that's so cheesy. But it's true. Like, yeah. Yeah, you know, for the past however many years we've had our company and now with YouTube, I think we've filmed like three videos in the time we've been in New York now. And mm-hmm. it just feels like we're having the best time in New yeah. York, you know? It's so cool. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, New York's cool. awesome. Yeah. So how many Sprinter vans have you guys had? Is it only one and then you're building a new one for right. your dad? Yeah. So tell me about that. <laughs> Yeah, like we're super excited. We, it's so funny. Van two now is just getting so much more premium features, mm. better build quality. So you're kind of like you want to switch, maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> In every video, it sounds like I'm so jealous. I'm, I am genuinely excited for your dad's yeah. van, and he should have the better things. Yeah. But I'm just like, oh wow, that maxi fan. Oh, that fan is blowing air. Like yeah. you know, I get real stoked on all of them, and they're just little things, you know. Mm. But in the van, they're a big deal. So. Yeah. I think he's just excited about like, he, you know, he's retired, divorced, he's got two dogs. He just didn't have a lot going on and, and, you know, might as well try the, try out freedom and not being tied down to a, to a place. So mm-hmm. like Beck said, he works for us one day a week and the rest of the time he can go explore and huh. see what it's like for a year. Right. Yeah. Um, and we're super excited to be able to help him and get the opportunity to build another van. It's been fun. Yeah, it has been a lot of fun. So it's epic. He's going to have his van of his own. What is that first destination? Yeah, I don't know. I think he's just excited to, like, we used to have a cottage up north. There's a big cottage country Mm. outside of Toronto. So even just to, like, spend the weekends by the water and Mm -hmm. maybe, like, he's pretty, um, I guess routine is the best word for him. He's a pretty routine guy. So just Mm -hmm. to kind of be kind living the van life is going to be a big deal yeah and then maybe he'll go an hour away and then come back and then <laughs> two hours away yeah and just to test the waters but then it's funny because I, I mentioned my triplet siblings my brother was is on the east coast of halifax and then my other brother is on the west coast so mm-hmm. now maybe he'll take a trip and go visit yeah. them we'll see that's mm-hmm. cool mm-hmm. Feel maybe like he'll that's... go to champ's diner he's also <clears throat> vegan 65 yes. years old no way yeah so what was when did he make that decision like after you or I after your brothers after, i think it was after you why has our social careers turned into everything about bob <laughs> honestly bob. our youtube channel because we we were doing this build <laughs> and we were crazy and thought oh we can daily vlog this build uh-huh. uh, my god crazy <laughs> so that's over but everyone was like even if i showed up for a second they're like but where's bob but where's bob <laughs> like is bob gonna start his own channel there was one time we said yeah if you guys want bob on youtube like do hashtag bob on youtube and the comments were insane it was just like 300 comments of hashtag bob on youtube and i'm like okay well (laughs) so bob obviously with the my siblings like he and then i think maybe it was the three siblings were 
veg for a while and then kind of went vegan and he was kind of like, well, what's going on with this? And he was actually living on a farm at that time. Oh. So maybe that kind of got him touch with him in touch with the animals. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, hey, dad, I'm going vegan as well, blah, blah, blah. And I'm more of like the extroverted, like, you know, start preaching a little bit about mm-hmm. veganism. And everyone always said you were the one that if, if anyone wasn't going to go vegan in the world, it would have been you. Yeah, sneaking vegan. turkey into mm-hmm. the cart, yeah, right? Like, making yeah. me sob. Yeah. <laughs> So I think just all four of his kids were vegan. They were no longer yeah. eating animal products. And it's like, whoa, maybe mm-hmm. I should find out what's going on. Yeah. And so he's 65 years old. Now, you want to talk about someone who's passionate about veganism. Dude. He is like, <laughs> yeah. he should be hanging out with Gary. Yeah. If he starts his own YouTube channel, he would just be like on there all day being like, hello, vlog. <laughs> Him and my brother are actually uh, working with uh, Veganuary, which is uh, huh. one of the largest um, online resources. They do like go vegan for January. So they're uh, actually working on the Canadian side of it. Cool. So he's like right into it. Bob. Yeah. Good old Bob. What a gem. Yeah. How, how, how has he received this attention? What oh, are, he's what are so his thoughts flattish. on it? Well, like we were saying, I don't think we talked about it on the podcast. I don't know if I should say it, but our office is on Google. So people mm. have been stopping by to meet Bob as well now. He's so got fans. the first one that came by to meet Bob we weren't we weren't around for and he's never (laughs) vlogged on his own like he'll be in our vlogs or whatever yeah but i don't know where we were so we came back and he's like guys you guys need to see this footage and i'm like what he grabbed a clip clip. dude he full frontal (laughs) vlog it with the screen up it was epic oh my god i love that phrase he grabbed a clip oh my god yes so um eric came by and was like i'm an electrician i know you're working on this part of the build can i be of any help or whatever and bob was just like you'll never believe it eric came by and it was so (laughs) he's like totally warming up now he's getting b-roll like when we were into the daily vlogs he would run out to home depot and bring a vlog camera he'd be like okay so now it's time for b-roll like (laughs) and then he'd just leave it on the dash but it was like oh oh, my and everyone's like living for bob's b-roll and nobody cares about our b-roll anymore and it's just a blast yeah (laughs) <laughs> with the new build you guys started a daily vlog not just a vlog yeah. but were you guys chugging it out every single day how was we were that chugging it out girl we were you know what i feel like you have to experiment we kind of touched on that earlier but you don't know what you're capable of until you try it mm-hmm. um, and daily vlogging takes you to that edge oh, yes yeah, it time. does and the craziest thing is we were building a van. So we were working. Well, I say and we, running, you running were working. Business. Yeah. So we're like, I'm running the business like full time on my own because Eamon's dedicated to this full time mm-hmm. and we're both filming, but you're basically taking on most of it. And Bob. And Bob. <laughs> Don't forget Bob. Um, so yeah, it was just a lot. I mean, I think there was, while the build was happening, it was a lot of fun. People were really like enjoying mm-hmm. watching it unfold every day. But it's just like not a sustainable thing for our lives to do that all the time. It was I'll, super fun. Like, yeah. And we kind of, we did like the on tomorrow's episode at the end. Mm-hmm. Shout out Casey. Thank you for that little. Gets, gets people. Yes, people were psyched. So yeah. stoked. Attached. Yes. So for a while there, it was super hot, super fun. And because we were two days, we were like a day ahead, which really That's helped. good. Yeah. But yeah, then yeah. what happened was like we didn't have a day of the van build. And then it just became every night or whatever. Or maybe we were a couple of days ahead. Then it became one day, and then yeah, it was like, trickling. oh shoot! And then it was just way it all. It always Catches ends up, up yes. to <laughs> you're you're shooting the day before for the next day, yeah. and then it becomes you're shooting the day of for the vlog that you're posting at night. That's yeah. that's how it. Yeah. That's because you were at DB grind. For yeah, for a while. DB grind. Yeah. I, I was grind. posting five times a week yeah five times a week so every weekday for like nine months almost a year and that was wow that was after the casey shout out and basically his one piece of advice he had for me he you know we were like dming on twitter and he was just like quantity more 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 and he was he was right during yeah during that time because youtube eats up quantity but if it's not right for you, it's not going to help you. Do you think that's still true about YouTube? No. I don't think so either. I don't think so. However, yeah, I do think 
when you can do it right, it 100% helps. Right. So when you are a Jimmy Fallon, a Jimmy Kimmel, um, those people who have teams that get out content like that and they post five times a day, yeah. every single day, yeah. and it's getting attention, you never miss a beat. It's mm-hmm. just like straight up consistency. Mm-hmm. How are you supposed to, yeah. you know, compete with that? Mm-hmm. So I think as individual creators, you really have to try everything because that's yeah. how you're going to learn what you love to do. But you have to land on something that's sustainable, yeah. um, but also something that challenges you. So, of course, always throw in the challenges, the one month of daily vlogging. Um, but, yeah, it killed me. I, I yeah. hated it. I, I did. And I was getting so far away from the stuff that I started out doing and I really mm-hmm. cared about. Like, I really started out with focusing on, like, camera gear and highlighting other people's creative processes Mm -hmm. and it wasn't about a vlog it was about me spending weeks on something I was super proud of yeah so um yeah I kind of just hit that wall and was like I gotta go back to if that means I only post one video a week two videos a week three videos a week so be it Mm -hmm. yeah so do you have a schedule that you like to do I don't I I would like a schedule but like I don't know once once John moved to New York and I was for the first time, like, really, this might sound somber, but, like, really stoked on life, you know? Yeah. Like, it was good. I'm obsessed with New York, obsessed with John, obsessed with my friends. Um, I didn't – and I was still challenging myself, like, creatively. But I kind of wanted a moment of just enjoying life. Yeah. <laughs> um, because college was so miserable for me. Like, high school and college was just all about the grind and mm. all about getting to where I am now. And so now that – There's a, you know, there's always that next step. But now that I've kind of reached a smaller plateau of like, okay, this is, this is a point where I've arrived. There's always more. Absolutely. Um, But just kind of having that moment being like, okay. I think that's actually like beautiful advice because Mm -hmm. I think it's really easy to be like, oh, we hit this number now it's on to the next and never taking time to just kind of Mm -hmm. relish in everything that you've done to get to this point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we still have lives to live and to enjoy. And I think that's the balance that we're really working Towards yeah. finding and everything and, you know, the viewers are, like, upset that the daily vlog has ended or whatever. But yeah. they'll stick around for yeah. the two week, right? Or of whatever. course. Of so, course. And yeah. it's never as bad as you think it's going to be. Yeah. You always think it's going to be the end of the world if you miss an upload. Yeah. Even when I was, like, super strict with Monday, Wednesday, Friday, when I missed an upload, I would beat myself up so much to where I was, like – too miserable to even like move on with my life or just like enjoy something and so I'm kind of in that middle place where like I think consistency is good yeah and important and if you can do it do it but there are times when life can be more of a flow Mm -hmm. you know yeah so um but yeah I mean you guys doing the van company I'm I'm a person who's like a homebody and like I I could post up at that desk and edit for eight hours and be like totally fine. How is it building a business and doing all this stuff on the road? I think for us, it's just second nature. We, you know, started our relationship on the road. We both thrive uh, just in new places and new experiences. And I actually feel like our company is doing better and growing more mm-hmm. now that we're out on the road and doing things. Or even if it was like, you know, people look at you and um, I was going to say it was your mom, but I won't. <laughs> Someone, you know, mentioned to us before we went to Mexico, like you can't take two months off from your business. Like you need to grow your business. And the only mm-hmm. way to do that is work really hard every single day and put in the hours. And that's kind of why I said at the beginning, we're like this cross of entrepreneur and hippie, because to us, it's like, no, if we take that two month break, we're going to be so much better when we come back and we're going to grow so much more than if we just sat there and grind, like went through the same motions every day. And I'm not saying that's what a homebody is for us, but I just think that when we're out and like being challenged Mm -hmm. or just being inspired by New York City or whatever Mm -hmm. it is, um, that's when we thrive the most. hundred percent. Yeah. You guys need to start a hippiepreneur online course. I think that has a ring to it. That's That sounded amazing, actually. Yeah. Hippiepreneur. So, hippiepreneur. You're yeah, you're welcome. We can settle down you can, on uh, it. Trademark that. <laughs> we'll, we'll toss you a couple percent every year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, last question, wrapping things up. Oh, my gosh. I think it's already you, over. Yeah, I mean, we hit an hour. We can keep going. No, guys. it's up to you. It's you your know? podcast. I mean, do you want to open it up to any discussion? <laughs> any questions? <laughs> 
No, you, you got it. <laughs> okay. Uh, but no, I mean, I've thoroughly, we just met, but I can already tell. BFFs, guys, come back. I'll visit yeah. in Toronto. Yeah, please do. Um, it's been so fun chatting. I will say we have a hammock. So we've slept four people in our van before. Wow. John's welcome. Okay. You can sleep. Uh, we'll put the air mattress below. He's good at sleeping wherever because he's a skater dude. Okay. He <laughs> grew up in the apartments with like 10 people and two okay. bedrooms. Okay, perfect. And then Me, on the other the hand, I might hammock. be more of the diva. The hammock? I mean, I, I just want <laughs> to no. make that. No. I said diva. <laughs> You're misunderstanding the word diva. That means you guys are going to be in the hammock. I'll take the bed. Sure. Okay. Okay. Two, it is a two-person hammock, so we could do that. I'd love okay. to do that. No, I would. No, but that sounds actually so much fun. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for coming oh, on. Course. Where can people find you on the internet? Oh, we're so bad. We're like all different names, aren't we? On YouTube, you can find us at Eamon and Beck. Do you want to spell your name? Because nobody knows your name. E A M O N. <laughs> Amen. And then just to confuse you, my Instagram is A dot mon. E H dot M O N. Yeah. So people call you A dot mon. So I heard your A. sloth uh, interview, and yeah. I was thinking maybe I will send that guy a DM. Yeah. He does have the handle at Yeah, and Eamon. there's someone who has Beck, and you have Amen, and we're like, maybe we should just make this happen. Toss so there you is, bucks. honestly, there is like this whole dark side of the web where you can really get any handle you dream of i'm not surprised that you know that it's it's just if <laughs> you, you dream of. yeah all all you need is money and a little bit of influence <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and my instagram is just my full name at rebecca maroney yeah love but it you'll have to link it because it's a long one everything will be in the show notes down below whether on youtube or itunes google play wherever you're listening to this guys thank you so much for being on wait oh, and i think didn't, wait us. didn't i have one more question though i hope you did wasn't i, I like over oh no i because i i wanted to ask okay guys psych it's not over yet but go check out their instagram and youtube it's linked down in the description below but my last question is, you have company, YouTube, all of this, you live life, you've traveled the world, you've backpacked. One nugget of mm-hmm. inspo, education, like like just a funny thing, just something that's impacted your life. What is it? It could be, it could be like a quote from Bob. Oh, Bob. It's it's we, butter. We've got Anything. enough Bob. <laughs> yeah, I think my biggest thing or my biggest piece that I always keep with me is... Uh, how do you phrase it? It's like not to strive for perfection. Not that you don't want to like create something great, but you have to start somewhere. And our mentor, our business mentor always says that too, is like start and then just get the ball rolling and keep catching up and keep growing and keep going. The biggest thing is that paralyzing fear that it's not good enough to hit that upload button. Um, and I or think anything, you just have right? to create and Whether go, that's yeah, a small oh, sorry, business yeah, and exactly. you're talking about packaging and you're like, oh, it doesn't mm-hmm. look that professional. Just start, yeah. sell it at a market. Yeah. Now you've made a little bit of money and you can go Reinvest. wake up tomorrow. I stamped our packaging for two years. I still stamp some of our packaging. Yeah, our wholesale bags are You know, you've got to start stamped. somewhere. You've got to start somewhere. And I think today is a really good day to start. So just Boom. go start. What Guys, do you think? I love it. If this just mic was droppable, it. I would have dropped the mic. <laughs> the mic is dropped. Guys, check check out their YouTube channel, Instagram. They are amazing human beings. Thank you guys so much. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right, so we're going to Champs? So fun. Yeah, guys, let's go to Champs. Champs? You don't have to ask champs. me twice. Woo. They'd be like, oh, these two nuts again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try one of everything, please. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Make sure to tune in every single Monday for a new episode of The Creative Exchange. Thank you guys so much for listening. Bye. Bye. Peace.